Somebody didn't tell us the truth this morning. I heard this morning that she is 40 something today. But I think she's about 18. Tell the truth. Yeah, daddy wasn't telling us the truth. You see, pro- he tell the truth. So you're 40 something today? All right. Happy birthday. I really enjoy these items from the choir. But boy, she's energetic. Whoa! If I chose to come to this church, I like singing, but I wouldn't join that choir. She'll kill me. She'll wear me out. But we love it for Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm very happy to be with you today. I lost one of my good friends here over the Christmas holiday, Brother Philip. Unfortunately, I was in Trinidad and could not be here for the funeral when the family called. But God is good. And then my colleague, I don't know what else is going to happen, lost his mother-in-law, lost an aunt, and right now his mother is holding on for dear life. It's Pastor Gordon. But they are among good people. And I know you will continue to pray with and for them. We have just begun a new year. But let me, let me say this. I'm talking about people at my church, not here. There are a lot of people at my church who are suffering from a malady that I cannot find a doctor to cure. It is called trumpitis. But what I'm saying is, Jesus was my president before the election. Jesus is still my president. Would you say amen? So we're going to cast all our cares upon him. And he will come through for us. I want to thank your first elder for the warm welcome that uh, I received when, when, when I came here this morning. I'm happy to have my wife here with me. It's not every time I go out she is able to be with me because she herself is a little busy at church. But uh, we snuck away today. Happy to be with you here at Lauder Hill. Let us pray. Father, you have prepared a message for your people. I'm just the conduit you're going to use for the delivery. Humble me at this time and use me mightily to deliver your word. And all glory and honor will be yours. In Jesus' name. Because we are at the beginning of a new year, I like to remind my church, whenever we come to the end of of a year, it is telling us that we are one year closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior. And we cannot be all that we've been last year. We've got to pledge to do better this year. Amen? So I have entitled my sermon this morning, Extreme Makeover. Second Corinthians chapter 5, so ably read by my dear sister. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Why? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The wonderful thing about my God this morning is that he is a God of newness. In a real sense, God is always doing something new. God is never stagnant. He is never outdone. He is never outdated. We are told in scripture that his blessings are new 
every morning. His grace is fresh in every situation. His goodness is present in every hour. God is a good God. Our presence here this morning will testify to the fact that our God is an amazing God. Let me see the hand of all those who made it through 2016 because of your, your driving skills. Let me put my hand up. We all made it through because of the goodness of God. He loves us with an everlasting love. You see, when God woke us up this morning, and our eyes beheld the virgin light of a brand new day. We know that God is still on the throne. That he sits high. But thank God he looks low. And he is always doing his thing. Every day. God is inspiring new dreams and new visions. New hopes. And a new possibilities. Every moment, God is re recreating a new life, a new purpose, a new people, a new church, and a new candidate for the kingdom of heaven. Every day, new blood is oozing through our veins and our arteries. New air flows through our lungs. Every day, new impulses are tingling in our bodies. Every day, the earth takes a new revolution around the sun. The stars create a new dance. The moon has a new illumination. The seas burst forth from the ground with new potential for gleaming. Every day, there is a new idea, a new concept, a new lesson, a new thought that has meaning. What a mighty God we serve. Acts chapter 17, verse 28, my Bible says, For in him we live, we move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Beloved, God is doing a new thing right now as we sit here in church this morning. For God is the captain of a new deliverance. He is the creator of a new creation. A study was done in the word New, and I looked it up in the Greek, says something that is uncommon, unheard of, a replacement. What this word is saying is God wants to change something within us even now. God wants to turn around something and replace that something in our lives. And if we just allow God he will take our fears and replace it with faith. He will take our weakness and he will give us strength. He will take our curses and bring to us blessings. He will take our failures and grant us success. He will take our poverty and grant us prosperity. He will take our sorrow and give us joy. He will take our murmuring and complaining and fill our lips with praise. What a mighty God we serve. God is saying, brothers and sisters, in 2017, instead of complaining about what you don't have, give thanks for what you do have. There's an elderly lady in my church. She's in her 90s. And when I came back from vacation, they told me that she was not feeling well. That she was having some pains in her back. 
So I called her. And I told her we were, myself and a couple of elders were coming over to visit with her. She said, I said to her, but how are you doing? She said, Pastor, I'm having some pains in my back. But thank God that I have a back that I could get some pain. And she just blew me away. You go to visit her and you leave refreshed. So much to give God thanks for. Why keep murmuring and complaining? I read this story. I thought I would share it with you. A man was in line at the bank. And he saw a little boy with his father. They were in the line going up to the teller. Every second, the boy would ask, Dad, are you sure? Are you sure they will give me a new one? You see, he had an old $20 bill in his hand. It seemed that it had fallen on the ground. The, 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 the color was fading and it was soiled and dirty. It was torn and, and, and messed up, crushed up. It, it was one of the ugliest $20 bills you have ever seen. Finally, he got up to the teller and he gave it to her. She then smiled. She looked at it, smoothed it out, went in her drawer and looked for the crispiest $20 bill and gave it to him. You see, the teller knew something that that little boy did not know. She knew that as long as that $20 bill had the spectral signature, it will be acceptable. What I'm saying to somebody this morning, through 2016, you might have been messed up you might have been soiled, thrown to the ground. You might have been trampled on and run over, ridiculed and rejected. But as long as the stamp of the blood of Jesus are on you, everything's going to be all right. God will give you a brand new life. God will give you a brand new experience. I want to declare to you this morning that God have his mark the mark of Jesus Christ written all over you so you are in good hands I heard a quartet song, sing this song, a song that I love a lot it says I'm satisfied oh I'm satisfied said he would be my comfort said he would be my guide when I looked at my hands, my hands looked new. And when I look at my feet, they did too. Ever since that wonderful day, my soul's been satisfied. I don't care what anybody say. My soul is satisfied. I don't care what happened in Washington. My soul is satisfied. My wife is here and I'm glad. But I don't care what happened at home. My soul is satisfied. Because my soul is wrapped up in Jesus. People in my church tell me, Pastor, you know it's time that you get serious. And one elderly lady told me, and she just came to my church. You don't look like a pastor. So when I asked her, how does a pastor look? She said, well, I grew up where the pastors only wear black, black suits. White shirt. Black tie. And they walk stately. And they didn't use to smile. I said, you know, you're right. I've learned from these guys. Because people must know that Jesus lives within me. And the God that I serve 
is a happy God. Read through the entire Bible and tell me how much time you see Jesus cry. Even on the cross, he didn't cry. He cried for our sin. He cried that his good friend had died, Lazarus. But God is a happy person. And as long as I am with him, I will continue to be happy. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 to 20. The Bible says, do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. <laughs> I, I, I have to pause here. Again, I, I, I don't know a lot of Hill people as such, you know, so I'm not talking to you. I'm relating something that goes on in my church. You know? The, the, the Bible says, do not remember the former things. And God told me that he will take my sins and he will cast them in the depths of the sea. But in my church, we have some deep sea divers. And they are so good, they don't even use oxygen tanks. They go down there and they bring back up your sins and your past and throw it in your face. And when they come to me, I have a song that I sing with a smile. And my whole church knows this song now and they sing it with a smile. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. That gets them crazy. Because the former things are passed away. I no, we consider everything to be brand new. The Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will make a road in the wilderness. And the rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me. The dragons and the owls. Because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen people beloved if we know anything about wilderness it's a neglected abandoned uncultivated uninhabited inhospitable impassable dry piece of land but God says, I will make a way. Sometimes the challenge of life comes upon us. And we feel as though we are in a desert. We feel as though we are all alone in a wilderness. But I came by to let somebody know when you get into your wilderness situation... When you get into your desert situation, don't give up. God says, I will make a way. The psalmist David says, weeping may endure for the night. But joy, real joy, wonderful joy comes in the morning. The problem with some of us, but we, we so hasty and we like everything so quick we don't wait till morning but joy comes in the morning <laughs> Our scripture reading says if any man be in Christ not in Muhammad you see Islam the aims to bring about prosperity to all mankind but prosperity without God always leads to destruction. That's why the songwriter says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. If any man 
be in Christ. Not in Buddha. Buddhism says that we must know who we are. That we have two natures. The ordinary nature, which is an unpleasant feeling of fear, anger, and jealousy. But we also have a true nature. The part of us that is true, wise, and pure. Brothers and sisters, if you know yourself real well and don't know God, you are just self-centered, self-absorbed, self-seeking, self-destructive. Because Jesus says, you ought to know me. Whom to know is life eternal. If any man be in Christ, not in Hinduism. Hinduism says that our thoughts are determined by our attitude, which in turn direct our actions. By our actions, we create our own destiny. But we know that good thoughts and good actions cannot create our destiny. Our destiny is wrapped up in Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father except he comes through me. I'm going to trust God. I don't know about you. I'm going to trust God regardless. And so I came here to let somebody know that the highest pleasure and the highest joy and the highest satisfaction is obtained by having Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Jesus as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is transformed. I love the story of the caterpillar. Like the transformation of a caterpillar into a gorgeous butterfly. If you read the history of the caterpillar, he's a little rough, lazy. He's a self-centered insect. They normally have two to six legs or two inches, six eyes, but they still cannot focus on anything or anywhere. Always looking busy, but going nowhere. A, cat a caterpillar was once in a garden and the farmer started playing with it. And he said, Mr. Caterpillar, why are you always on the ground? And why are you so ugly? Why are you so purposeless? But as if the farmer heard the, cap in, the caterpillar says, Sir, give me some time. Because my change is coming. Give me some time, my change is coming. The next time that that farmer saw the caterpillar, he realized that something had happened. The thick covering that entombed the caterpillar in its own flesh started to break away. A chemical reaction changed the very uh, uh, nautical, autonomical makeup of the caterpillar. And soon thereafter, there was an emerging beautiful butterfly that spreads its wings and started flying. Somebody told me that process is called metamorphosis. I learned some big words here. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what God is doing for us. He's promised to do this for everyone. Once we were like useless caterpillars, we had no focus, we had no direction, 
But in an instant, the Holy Ghost came into our lives and transformed us, changed us, and we began a spiritual metamorphosis. And it has ended with us gaining new heights every day. So we can soar and fly away. Man, those guys in the boot are good. Hallelujah. Isaiah says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You might be in a wheelchair today. Don't worry. Your time is coming. You might have a walker. There might be arthritis in the knees. Don't worry. You will mount up with wings like eagle and fly away. The text says all things are passed away. Now, as pastors, we are called to move sometimes from one district to another. Listen to me, man. I hate moving, sister. And I I don't know about you all, but you only know what you really have when you decide to move. We were living in Port St. Lucie and we, we decided to move down to Miami. I saw some things coming out of boxes I didn't see for years. And the sad part about it, some of them still had the price tag on them. <laughs> in our culture, when we move, we throw away a lot of stuff. Am I talking truth? You know, in America, it's not so much down this side in Florida, but when I was living in New York, there are people who would drive out wrong every day with pickup trucks looking for what you throw away. I remember we threw out, you rich people wouldn't know what I'm talking about, but we used to call it Morris Chair. You see, they're looking foreign. We call it Morris Chair in my days when I was growing up. And my aunt had an old set and she threw it away. And we were sitting by the window and we saw this two little Mexican about three feet high in a big pickup truck. And those guys took that thing up and placed it on the truck and they went away. My cousin told me two weeks after they saw those same guys in the swap shop. And they could not believe what they saw. Those guys sand those things down. They polished it. They vanished it and it looked brand new. See, we rich folk, we too lazy. So we would prefer to throw it away and just buy another. But we throw away a lot of stuff. Now, what I'm saying this morning is that when you move in with Jesus, come on now, when you leave the world and you're moving with Jesus, there are a lot of stuff that you need to throw away. There are a lot of stuff that you need to leave behind. You cannot move in with Jesus with all the stuff. You have to give up your unsanctified past. Hanging out with the wrong crowd. Listening to all kinds of derogatory music that turns your mind off, turn your body on, and lose your wild stallion of passion. All things. The old meddling in people's business. I'm talking about my church. Getting up in people's Kool-Aid, 
when you don't even know their flavor. All the things. The old malice. The old fornication. Somebody listening to me this morning. The old pride. The old gossiping. The old tail bearing and lying. The old envy. The old abuse of your wife. And wives just abuse their husbands too. All things the Bible says are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God wants to give us today an extreme makeover. I'm sure some of us know the television show called Extreme Makeover. It's a program where they take people who are not happy with the way they look. Let me say from the onset, I'm not the most handsome guy here. My hair used to be your color. But I am very happy with the way I am. Because I was still made in the image and likeness of God. But some people do not like the way they look. Some people have a little flat nose. They think they should have a straight one. Some have a slim face. They go and they put Botox or whatever you call it in it. They want straight hair. They want to look like the supermodel with a Coca-Cola bottle shape. Some people believe. Thank God my wife didn't believe this. Some people believe if you're not tall, dark, and handsome, there's a problem. Let's see, my wife is so short. Even if I was tall, she, I wouldn't, she wouldn't be able to see my face. So that's why I made it. But we got to be satisfied with who we are. We must know who we are. You see, the, 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 the portrait that the world gives came from Warner Brothers, Paramount Pictures, Disney, Universal Studio, and Hollywood. Not from God. I want to let every Christian and every follower here this morning to know that we were fearfully and wonderfully made by an awesome God. There are people who are not happy. So they go through a whole lot of operations. Comedic surgery. Liposuction. Trying to transform themselves into something beautiful. And I have seen some of them and I wish they had kept their money. The only extreme makeover that you and I need is a heart transplant. And the surgeon that is going to give you that heart transplant will never leave a scar on your chest. He will take out your heart of stone and, and give you a heart of flesh that you will be able to serve him, to love him, to worship him. That's the extreme makeover we all need. Would somebody say amen? the end of it, your nose know, still may not be straight, but you still look like Jesus. <laughs> I know that's exactly what Jesus did for me. This is hard to believe for some people. But I was not always the way I am today. I was never bad. She watched me like if it's not true. I was miserable. 
And I used to give my pastors a lot of trouble, man. If they tell me Ellen White say this, I come up with something to counteract it. I, I had lost my way as a youth trying to fit in with the crowd. But I remember that day as if it was yesterday. I walked into the San Juan Seventh-day Adventist Church, my home church, after not going to church for quite a while. I walked up the front steps with a friend of mine who came to get me to bring me to church. We were about 18, 20 years of age. And as we walked up the steps, there were six or eight deaconesses all dressed in white, looking pure and holy, standing on the top step. And when I reached up to them, one of them said, Hey, hey, Brother Roberts, I taught you backslide. That was my welcome back. So I made, as a good pathfinder, a right about turn. And I was heading back home when my body snatched me. He says, Theo, the devil comes to church too, you know. He said, come with me. So we went around the church, went through the side door, and we sat in the front seat. Church, the sermon that I heard that day was given to the pastor especially for me. At the end, I jumped up went up to the altar and recommitted my life to Jesus Christ. I heard the voice of Jesus calling and I decided to give him my life. And it's been <laughs> many years now. since I gave my life to Jesus. I was still in my teens. I've had my ups. I've had my downs. There have been difficult days. It's not always been good. But I can say Jesus has never, never failed me. I sing with authority. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I upward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I've come too far to turn back now. Because God is a good God. And he is in the touching business. How do I know? He touched me. Oh, he touched me. I thank God this morning that he touched me. You see, he touched Levi. And he became an apostle. He touched a tax collector. And he became the author of the first gospel. He touched some rough fishermen. And they became fishers of men. He touched the sons of thunder and they became sons of the most high God. He touched blind Bathemus and he became a visionary. He touched the persecuting Saul and he became the preaching Paul. I thank God that he touched me. Behold all things have become new. When you're a child of God, you may fall. You may make mistakes. But if you keep your eyes on the prize, which is Christ Jesus, everything is going to be all right. He has promised to pick us up 
turn us around, plant our feet on solid ground. That's the God we serve. The problem is in this new year, I am asking everybody to seek a new relationship with Jesus. Some of us, I'm not sure that we know Jesus. You see, Jesus had this problem all his life. At age 12, he and his parents went to town for the Passover. And if you remember, his parents got lost. Now, people say Jesus got lost. You cannot put Jesus and lost in the same sentence. No! His parents got lost. And when they found him, he was in the synagogue trying to explain to doctors and lawyers who he was. And they were amazed. So they were asking a whole lot of questions. Now, in my sanctified imagination, I believe the questioning went something like this. Son, what is your name? And Jesus must have said, well, by my mother's side, my name is Jesus. But by my father's side, my name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. My son, where are you from? Well, by my mother's side, I'm from Nazareth. But on my father's side, I'm from everlasting to everlasting. Before Abraham was, I am. Okay, boy. What's your occupation? Well, by my mama's side, I am a carpenter. But by my daddy's side, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart. That's on my daddy's side. Okay, son. What is your destiny? Well, on my mother's side, they're going to take me up to Mount Calvary and they're going to crucify me. They will push spears in my side. They will nail me to an old rugged cross. But that's on my mama's side. But on my daddy's side, in three days, in three days, in three days, I will rise again and I will shout oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory they cannot keep me in the grave hallelujah and after that he says I'm going to my father so that the people of Lord of Hill can have life and have it more abundantly. My question this afternoon is, do you really love Jesus? Do you want to have a closer walk with Jesus through 2017? As we sing the first stanza of our closing hymn, if your decision is to walk with God, to forget the things of the past, to allow him to bring transformation through this extreme makeover. I'm going to ask you just to stand right where you are as we sing, whiter than snow. Lord, Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. Wash me. Wash me. Make me whiter than snow. I long to be perfect. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every item. Cast out every foe. Wash me.
whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter Just before we sing the second stanza, Jesus says, if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Somebody like me know that you need an extreme makeover. Not that you're bad or rotten, but you want to have a closer walk with Jesus Christ. As we sing the second stanza, if that is your desire, just leave right where you are and come down to the aisle. Let's talk to God about it this morning. As we sing the second stanza, just leave where you are and come to Jesus. Lord Jesus, look down from the throne in the stars and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I gave up myself and whatever I know, now wash me and now wash me like you. Just before we sing the next stanza, while the door of mercy is still swinging open on its hinges, somebody still needs to come to Jesus. I am not asking you to join a church. I am asking you to join Jesus. Amen. And while we sing the next stanza, as the spirit impresses you, just leave where you are and join this crowd of soldiers up front. Next stanza, please. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. My faith for my cleansing, I see the blood. Holy Spirit to dwell with us, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.